New from Bamboo, it's the P2S. Hey, it's Joel, you're in 3D Printing Nerd Studios, proudly powered by PCBWay. 8% off, link in the description. Obviously, you know what to do. Bamboo has released the P2S. They call it the successor to the P1S, hence the naming nomenclature, but it's not. It's a replacement. This is a replacement for the X1 Carbon, and I can tell you exactly why. Getting this out of the box was fun, easy, typical for Bamboo. Uh, my son David had him on the camera while I was getting this out of the box, and we, we had a bunch of fun. It, it came out of the box, and the AMS was inside and there were screws holding the build plate down and the screen goes on as you would expect. Like everything, every part of, of getting it out of the box felt very reminiscent of the first time I got an X1 Carbon out of the box because this is essentially an upgraded X1 Carbon. The first run experience, the out of box and first run experience is bar none the best thing in the industry. Bamboo has nailed it. 100%, the setup was easy, the first print was easy, the UI is delicious on the screen, it's easy to tap, it's full color, the print works, it's nice and fast, the quality's there, first run on the bamboo is the best. First run out of the way though, we gotta talk about how this is an upgrade. So the P1S, if we take that as the base, the, the P1S as the base, low cost, fully enclosed, Core XY, high-performing, wonderful machine. I know lots and lots of people that use the P1S as a farm machine or as a prototyping machine because it's fantastic. Uh, the price point was perfect, and I think Bamboo wants to carry that across. The first thing you're gonna notice is the screen. It looks more like an X1 carbon screen and not the potato that the P1S had. Ew. The P1S, for as high performing as a machine it is, that potato on the front, I believe, held the machine back. It is fully enclosed like the P1S before, but you'll notice on the back, it now has a spot for two different AMS units to be inserted by default from the factory. One thing you'll also notice as well upgraded from that P1S, there's handles. So if you need to pick it up and move it, you don't have to try to scoot your fingers underneath a heavy machine. You just put them in the handle and you lift. It just makes sense. And then on the inside, there is a wonderful lip right here. It's a ramp. If you remember in previous machines, filament poop and doodads that get caught below, you have to try to scoop them and then lift them over a 90 degree edge to fall over a cliff into a napkin, a towel, a garbage, something like that. And now you don't have to do that. There's a ramp. You could run Hot Wheels cars off that ramp. It's just like that. And so instead of Hot Wheels cars, you've got debris and filament poop that you can just scoot out of the machine so, so easily. And it's those small little things that really come together to make it a wonderful experience. Well, and la the last thing I'm gonna mention about the upgrade parts, the hot end itself is utilizing the new hot end system that was introduced with the A series, carried over to the H series, and now it's in the P series 3D printers. Rather than taking screws out to remove it, it's a quick release system. Blah, 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 doesn't work, yes. It's fantastic. Like, it made a Benchy. It obviously made a Benchy, and it does it really well, but at this point, any machine that can't print a Benchy with its own material, we at this point expect this. This isn't the, the unique thing, this is the default, and anything that can't do the default, that's a problem. This can do the default. I also printed that little uh, build plate scraper right there, where it comes with the, the metal bits, and then you put a screw or two in, and then it houses it down. Uh, it is it is programmed for multi-material, so it's got the name on it. All of the PLAs I used were Bamboo Lab PLAs just because I had them handy and the little RFID tags that roll through in the AMS worked and it was able to discover the filaments and tell me how much was left and all that kind of thing. Uh, but the scraper, it, it literally works. This thing prints PLA, it does it really well. Like if your sole purpose in life is to print PLA things, this'll do it really well. Petchy was a, a slightly different story. Not that it couldn't do it well. So this model by Clockspring is wonderful and it printed it all at once, just like that. One, there's a tremendous amount of filament poop that comes from a model like this. 
It's what happens when you have a single nozzle and multiple filaments. You just have to deal with the poop. Typically, I don't like to print multiple colors like this in a machine like this because again there's just a bunch of waste product that i don't want to have to deal with and so this was just for testing this was pet g and this was using all bamboo lab pet g's everything looks great except for this red filament and for some reason maybe it wasn't dry enough I just, I don't know, but there was a lot of, there was a lot of discolorations here. And so I'm going to chalk this up to filament and not machine. However, the machine did have a massive issue with this and we need to talk about it. Oh boy. I used the Panda Perch on top to house two AMS2 Pros because with that Pet G, I wanted five different filaments and I had five different Pet Gs from Bamboo Lab loaded. And within the slicer, I was able to slice it just fine. It recognized all the filaments and, I, you know, full send. It worked. But I had to pause the print multiple times because the filament would gather around the nozzle. It was PET-G and it was a lot of filament that was gathering around the nozzle. Some of the filament scraps didn't go down the chute. 99% of them did, but some did not. And, and that's to be expected with a machine using a single nozzle with multiple colors or multiple filaments. It reminded me of the H2D launch because when I did the 3D prints for the H2D launch, the PET-G performed flawlessly. And then after launch, a firmware update was sent to the machines. And for some reason, at that point, PETG didn't work well. It gathered around the nozzle. And this reminds me of that. And so I don't know what's happening here. And so further investigation is needed it did, as you saw, print the pet G brilliantly. Well, at least not the red, but the rest of it printed brilliantly. That material gathered around and wicked up. And at the end of the print, I tried to remove the boot and it didn't come off without ripping it. And so that, that material ripped the boot and then the nozzle was stuck in place. Like, this is bad. And I had to preheat the nozzle to 170C in order to remove it. And then I had to scrape filament off of it because the filament got in between the nozzle and what it rests against, the heater, and it kept it there. So that is an issue. And I ran into it. The print still turned out good, but it is a lingering issue. And if you do multicolor pet G printing, there is a chance that you run into the same issue that I did. Obviously, further investigation is needed on my side, but in the meantime, if you get one of these, just keep a close eye on it. No time lapse on that print. Um, I tried, but the USB stick died. I don't think the machine killed it. I think this was nearing end of line. And so this most likely, I'm just gonna... So long. I wanted to throw a large PLA print on the machine just to give it some time. This was going to be roughly 12 hours and it, it turned out great. This is using Bamboo Labs PLA Sparkle Purple and it's a, it's a marble chase or a marble run. And it printed in a few different pieces and then it just, it just goes together. The marbles are wonderful. It's so beautiful to watch it happen the marbles just cascading down this thing and it's crazy to me that at this point within 3d printing we have these machines that are essentially versed in magic because i loaded the model from maker world within the slicer i hit print this pooped it out and it just works and it's so exciting to me to think about the future where this is standard it's just what it does and we're at that point and i'm so thankful. Oh, that's just awesome. With the nozzle clumping issue, I wanted to try multicolor PLA just to see if it experienced the same thing. I loaded up the Panda Perch. I had two different AMSs on top, each with four different PLA colors. I made these coasters. I made these coasters and they turned out great. There was no nozzle clumping. They're also not very tall, which means there wasn't that much waste product for it. As a proof of concept, these are really cool and I'm really happy that it was able to do that. And it looks like the nozzle clumping issue on multi filaments is just kind of with the pet G. 
and not PLA, at least in my experience. And so I'm really happy these worked. Multicolor PLA, it really works well. For TPU, uh, the machine does tell you that you have to bypass the filament buffer and erect some sort of structure to feed the filament in directly into the extruder from up top. I don't wanna say TPU is just forgotten or not thought about. I think for bamboo, TPU just isn't prioritized. It worked, like this, this strap in this, this cookie CAD material, look at that, that is gorgeous TPU. And it made this, this strap, like this is, this is a strap. And if you saw my short form piece of content from 3D Printopia, you know that this strap can hold me in the air. Full Joel, TPU printed, can hold me. And this machine, made it. And so if we just extrapolate a little bit, then this machine being able to utilize these materials, these flexible materials, yes, you have to go through a little bit of a rigmarole to make it work. But once you do, it works and it works really well. So being able to prototype in flexibles or end use parts for first robotics or engineering classes, it's easily done with this machine. And I'm really happy to see that. I did not do ABS or ASA in this machine. I've had roughly a week in order to do the printing before I talk to you about it. If it works like the X1 Carbon or the previous P1S, because it's not a heated chamber, you can't go really tall reliably with an ABS or an ASA. Not tall runs of ABS and ASA, those are probably gonna work, but if you want a further deep dive into it on this machine, let me know and I'll acquire some ABS and some ASA and we'll put it through its paces. So at the end of the day, what you're getting with the P2S, I believe is an upgraded X1 Carbon experience. And that seems to make sense. Because at this point, the X1 Carbon is their first machine, their oldest machine. I believe the X series is going to be sunsetted. They're going to they're gonna let it walk down the path and just retire next to a lake somewhere where it can sip coffee and feed birds on its deck. I think the X series is done. And I think this is proof of that because they've essentially taken an X1 Carbon, they've upgraded it a little bit, and then they've called it a P2S and the P-Series is gonna be their prosumer brand going forward. I think the A-Series, for what it's worth, is still the low-cost consumer brand, with the H-Series being the, the professional, big-budget type machine. Uh, I, I think that's where we're going with that. The P2S, though, for what it's worth, performs incredibly well. Yes, TPU isn't prioritized, but it does work once you mitigate the issues in getting the TPU into the extruder. The PETG does gather around the nozzle when doing multicolor PETG prints. Uh, further investigation is warranted, but it was very reminiscent of a problem before. And so I don't know if it is fixed at this point, but time will tell. PLA works great in this machine, as you would expect. And multicolor PLA also works great in this machine. And having the ability from the factory to hook up two AMS units to it, I think is going to really help the people that utilize this machine for print farming and they can offer products that have either more colors or they won't have to switch out materials in a single AMS in order to offer the more colors that are available to what they print on their farm. I think that's cool. The price, the price, you wanna know the price? You know what, me too. At time of filming today, the price is not available. Hey, had to break in. Late breaking news. The P2S at launch will not be available in the US market. It'll be available outside the US at the prices shown on your screen. Bamboo siting, potential tariff changes here in the US that would affect the price in which they could offer the P2S. And so they're gonna hold the release. And then once things calm down and they can figure out the proper price with the current tariff policy, they will then release the P2S here in the United States at a price that they will announce then. That's what we know about the P2S so far. Uh, follow Bamboo on their social media handles to find out when things will be available. <laughs> Let's wrap this up. I think this is a worthy successor to the X1 Carbon, and I think this is gonna find its way into a lot of garages, schools, and print farms around the world. All right, that's the P2S. Thanks for watching. If you did, you're awesome. Don't forget to talk each other the more fight for cards you believe in and then print all the things. And as always, high five.